I'm Martin Chowowski and I work in the Samsung R&D uh, center here in Warsaw. I'll try to keep the talk very technical. I will not show you um, any line of code, unfortunately, uh, but there will be a lot of uh, diagrams and I hope that after, after this talk you will get some intuition on how neural machine translation works. Yeah, I'm really happy to share um, the, the knowledge we, we, we have um, in, in Samsung. And uh, recently, uh, we have taken part in neural machine, tra uh, machine translation competition. So there's uh, a lot of things going in Samsung uh, around the machine translation. So what, what actually is neural machine translation? And so it's like end-to-end -end translation done using neural networks, right? So by end-to-end, -end, I mean it's, uh, it's a one monolith, right? So the, the, the model uh, takes uh, the uh, sentence, in one, uh, sentence in one language and outputs the translation in the other. So, so does the training run. Uh, before, we had uh, like phrase-based machine translation where you have to bother uh, about learning separate language model, separate translation model, um, word class model, uh, reordering model, and then do some smart fiki miki at the end to, um, to build up an uh, optimized uh, translation system. Here, um, you don't bother. You just put the uh, training parallel cor corpora and uh, get the translation model at the end. So it's like Basically, the idea is to uh, the, the neural network first takes the um, input sentence in this, the source language and codes it to some kind of uh, real valued representation. And some like to say it's like uh, interlingua. Uh, and then, uh, starting from this representation, it decodes the output uh, sentence in the uh, target language. Right? So, is it already human translator level? Uh, well, uh, you can see that the improvement in the, in the previous technologies like phrase-based or syntax-based uh, statistical machine translation uh, did not improve greatly recently, right? And, and uh, the neural machine translation, which uh, started for good uh, in 2015, um, really goes forward uh, significantly, right? But um, I would not say uh, we're there yet, right? So, so th there are um, simple um, language pairs like Spanish and Portuguese, which are, let's say, easy to translate. But there are, uh, w when we go to the European Asian translation, there are much more uh, problems like, there is no spacing or punctations in, in Japanese or Chinese, right? So um, it's not human level there. Uh, okay, so this was a big picture and we will uh, uh, gradually go down to the level below and below. So uh, how the model encodes the input sentence. So. Uh, a sentence is a sequence, right? So the natural way of processing a sequence in neural networks is recur re recurrent neural networks. So it was the first, the, the first what came to the mind of, of research. So we have a, a recurrent neural network that com, uh, processes the uh, input sentence token by token, updates its um, internal state, it's a hidden state of recurrent, recurrent network, um, and after processing the whole sentence, the last hidden state of the recurrent network is, let's say, a vector that may say summarizes the whole sentence, right? Uh, having this summarized vector, you can start decoding. So decoder is another uh, recurrent layer that uh, takes this summarized vector and outputs 
token by token um, uh, t tokens in the target language. Yeah, so it it takes these this vector as a context, um, takes what was the last uh, decoded um, token to know where where it is in the translation, and outputs uh, outputs the the next uh, token in the target language, right? So this way it decodes the the, the tokens. Uh, until it it gets to the end of sentence token, end of sentence token, right? So uh, this is uh, it, this was the first uh, model, uh, one of the first models proposed uh, in the neural machine translations, and it works reasonably well. But you probably get the intuition that uh, having one vector that summarizes all the whole sentence is not the best idea, and you're right. Okay, so it works for short, short sentences, but it gets poor with the longer ones, right? So um, the next step in the evolution of neural machine translation was uh, encoder decoder with attention. So um, uh, human does not translate uh, reading the sentence, remembering it, and generating the the output. Right? It it reads uh, human reads the sentence, knows the context, and then goes back to the source sentence and translate part by part. And this is what attention does. Uh, so uh, so now we do not uh, remember only the last uh, state of the encoder, but we remember each each state uh, while decoding, right? So we, we have a bunch of uh, of uh, hidden states of the encoder, and we call them uh, annotations. And now the decoder sta starts decoding, but uh, he knows the current state, its current state, asks the attention mechanism. It's like the this this little plus sign is the attention mechanism. It should be probably uh, bigger, but anyway. Uh, it, uh, it decoder asks the attention, what, uh, what part of the source sentence, or which tokens are most uh, of most importance right now uh, for decoding? So the attention computes for each annotation a weight of how, um, how important it is in this in the current moment of decoding. So uh, and then the uh, all whole annotations are averaged, weighted by this, this attention, and input to the decoder so it, it knows which word or token to, to decode. Okay, so each time it generates um, an output, it updates its state, asks the attention, what now? What's, what's important at this particular moment? Um, computes the current context of the decoding. Uh, the attention puts this context to the decoder, and the decoder um, computes the output, and so on. Uh, OK, so we're, we're switching to the uh, next level. Right, so so more more details. Um, I said that the encoder is a recurrent neural network, what, la one layer of recurrent neural ne network, and in fact, it it usually it is uh, more complex. It, it takes two layers. So there there's a one layer, one recurrent layer that um, uh, consumes the source sentence from the beginning to the end, and uh, a second recurrent layer that consumes the input sentence from the end to the beginning. And those annotations I was talking about is concatenation of the hidden states of, of, of the forward and backward layer. So now you can um, uh, think of this annotation, of this, this con concatenation as a well, let's say more complete representation of, of this particular token. So the, the forward layer. Um, uh, the, the forward hidden state 
uh, holds the information from the beginning up to this particular token. And the, uh, the backward, uh, backward hidden stage holds the information from the backward uh, to this token. So, uh, so this annotation, let's say, uh, encodes the information about this token in the context of the whole, whole sentence, right? Uh, okay, so it, it was a state of the arts uh, last year, but uh, probably many of you uh, um, remember that the most uh, popular image in presentation about image processing and convolution networks was something like this. Uh, I, I saw this image. Uh, in all presentations, so we need to go deeper, right? So the um, in neural machine translation, it goes the same way. So uh, why only two layers uh, when encoding? Yeah, we probably can stack more of them to um, uh, compute more structured representation of the of the of the sentence, right? So we can stack. Uh, th this is the the um, b uni unidirectional stacked encoder. So so those are, are, are the, these two uh, forward and backward layers I, I showed you before, but split it. Uh, here's this concatenation, and then you you stack next recount layers that process the concatenated uh, representation. Uh, but you can also think of uh, uh, this. Uh, so you have the forward layer, and you stack a next recurrent layer, but uh, it processes the uh, already processed hidden states in backward direction. So it, it let's say, holds um, the the sequence order better than the approach on, on the on the left. So you process the first branch process forward, backward, forward, backward, and so on. And the second branch uh, processes the, the sentence backwards, forward, backward, for and so on. And you concatenate those states, uh, the structured representation at the end. Okay, but this was the second most popular uh, image in the uh, presentation about image processing. Uh, they they always uh, looked for some more depth. And here uh, in neural machine translation. The same. Uh, there is another level up of, of depth in the uh, translation models, and this is uh, why a single recurrent cell uh, has to be simple. It may, uh, within each cell, the hidden state may be um, uh, computed by several layers, building a hidden state more more complex and, and, and structured representation. So so each cell is in itself um, in itself it contains several layers and the recurrent happens after the um, the structured representation is is computed. Okay so it, it was the, the encoder and the same goes with the decoder, right? So uh, I said b before it was just the the bottom, uh, the bottom um, layer. So, uh, as I uh, told you before, uh, first the decoder takes the uh, previously generated uh, token, asks the attention mechanism to compute the uh, current context, and then outputs the um, uh, up updates its hidden state and outputs the 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 next output. Right. So why not? Stack uh, more of uh, such layers uh, up upon this one, right? So there is a variety of uh, of ways you can do this. You can stack um, exactly the same layer with attention, and on each level you can compute the attention anew. Uh, you can share uh, the attention you you computed before. There there is many uh, many different approaches. The the, uh, the one we we used was the um, Concatenating the attention from the first layer with the output of the uh, of the first layer of re recurrence, right? So uh, 
it improves the results, the quality of the translation significantly, but there's no free lunch, right? Uh, so it comes with a price, and the price is uh, the models get uh, heavy, right? So the number of parameters uh, grows significantly, and thus the training speed uh, drops down, right? We have, we have uh, uh, done much in the field of parallelization of the uh, training. So uh, after uh, several months, we could go down from um, several weeks of training one model to several days, right? Using uh, multi-GPU and Python, by the way. Uh, but I'll, I'll get to this uh, in several slides. Um, OK, so, so what's next in neural machine translation? Uh, uh, up to now, we train the, uh, the, the, the models using the maximum likelihood. So we, we force the model to translate exactly the same way as we had uh, uh, in, the, in the training data. But that's not true, right? You can translate a sentence in many different ways, and every, every way might be good, right? So th this is uh, un unsolved yet. Uh, we should explore new architectures, right? Less heavy, more compact. Um, there is, uh, I showed you only the recurrent approach, right? But it is, it, ten it tends to be slow, right? It has to process the uh, sequence one by one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's harder to parallelize than, um, let's say, convolutional networks. Right? So th there are already approaches called uh, self-attention, um, convolutional networks for translations. Um, all those uh, are interesting and, and should be evaluated to, to see if they can offer the same level of quality as the recurrent uh, networks. Uh, of course, we have to optimize the training and the coding time. Now, it's quite important when you think of, of deployment of such a system. There's, of course, uh, multilingual uh, machine translation, right? So uh, up to now, um, you had to have a model for a direction. So you have a model for German to English and another model for English to ge German. It scales very poorly with the number of languages, right? It scales in square. So uh, if you are thinking of covering 95% of, of Earth population that speaks more or less 45 languages, um, having 45 times 44 models, um, it's, uh, uh, it's a bit of pain. So the multilingual approach uh, trains a single model that can translate uh, many languages into many languages, right? Uh, and of course, uh, the translation, uh, uh, right now you, you think of translation as uh, translating, translating single sentences, right? But um, the translation should look completely different uh, if you translate a, a dialogue or a paragraph, right? Uh, and where is Python? It's why I'm here. Uh, all, all that I was talking uh, about was done uh, using Python. So we, we, we use the Nematos framework that is developed in uh, Edinburgh by a group of, of machine translation specialists. And they, um, they work with Theano. I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with, with this uh, framework. Uh, it, was, uh, it was, unfortunately, uh, developed by uh, Montreal. And uh, like four weeks ago, they said that it will no longer support this. It's like a year of, of support, but no development. But anyway, it's a uh, perfect framework for, um, for uh, machine learning. It's a symbolic framework. It has uh, uh, efficient differentiation, and it can be well paralyzed uh, on several GPUs. Uh, we use also a Platon framework. I believe it, it, it's also a Montreal code. Uh, it's, it is a wrapper uh, of nickel library from NVIDIA that allows you to um, do multi-GPU training. It has also uh, MPI, so not only one node, but several nodes. You can, you can uh, parallelize uh, the um, computation. 
Um, and of course, there's a bunch of other um, uh, Python uh, codes that do translations, like tensor to tensor. Um, it's, uh, it's this approach with self-attention. Uh, neural monkey, uh, and uh, there's a PyTorch that uh, seems to be quite popular, popular recently, but I have no, no experience in, in, in that one. That's all, thank you. Questions? Oh, loads of questions. That was the first hand raised. Hello, I would like to ask, uh, how do you define uh, tokens? Are there a single word or the bunch of words? Okay, so, so I, I, I use the, 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 the word token. The, the words uh, on the presentation uh, uh, a bullet about this. Uh, we are not working on the word level, right? Uh, because uh, working on word level could uh, potentially make the uh, dictionaries very large, right? So like in, in uh, languages like German, when, when, where you have words uh, build up of uh, so-called so compounds words, Tageslicht, Projekt, or, or something like that, there's uh, a lot of, of different words. So, so we use a concept that is called a subword. So we statistically divide words in um, smaller pa parts that, uh, that we work on, right? So the most common words are left untouched, but the words like Tageslicht Projekto are, are divided, divided in, in, into separate words. One more. Uh, so you use features based on embeddings of these subwords, right? Yeah. So exactly. uh, what? Uh, but you use something like word embeddings for this. Yeah, for but this, it's right? end to end. Yeah. The, the, the there yeah. is a ma matrix in, at the beginning uh, of the of the processing before the uh, entering the uh, recurrent layer. There's a there's an embedding matrix that is trained uh, all together end to end. Right, so th there are embeddings, but th uh -huh. these are not word to vec or anything. Uh -huh. of okay. And how how does it? Uh, you um, actually uh, didn't uh, tell us if you use some like uh, task specific uh, translation. I mean, do you uh, try to translate like everything, or do, do you try to break down, for example, that you can translate like I don't know small talk or uh, you yeah, know asking for. Uh, directions or something, but in general, it's it's not so good. It's a very very good question. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, like we have a huge corpora that we use to train a general model, but to uh, to have high quality in let's say uh, common dialogues or uh, asking for directions or, or whatever, we um, tune the general model with a smaller corpora. Usually, you don't have a big corpora for a particular d domain, right? So you, uh, you, do, you do in domain tuning from the general model to the, to the domain model, right? My question, my question was specifically, uh, how uh, do you observe something like for some topics, the translation is much easier or something like this? To to topics? For example, uh, you, uh, in, in Samsung, right, you, you use some things for like chat, chatbots or some help. So I don't know if, if I'm asking, f for example, asking for weather or directions is, is much easier than, um, than, for example, like general chat, chatbots. I'm, I'm not sure uh, how to estimate which one is easier. If you have uh, good quality in-domain data, for training in-domain model, it will be good. Yeah, it depends on on the training data for that particular domain. There's one question in front. So, which uh, data sets would you recommend to start playing with machine translation, and how much data do you need to get some reasonable results? Oh, okay, so uh, the question about data is 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 hard one, right? So the, there is uh, Opus, a website Opus, 
on which there's a um, collection of uh, open source uh, parallel data. It's like open subtitles is uh, the biggest one, I guess. So the, there's uh, subtitles for movies in different languages, right? You can build a parallel corpus out, out of those. There's a um, United Nations corpus that is of quality, really good quality, but it's not really big. Um, the good point to start is um, is going to the web pages uh, um, of the contents, the tr trans translation content, contents, content, contests like uh, WMT and IWSLT, and they it's like annual uh, competition of uh, translating algorithms. They they um, uh, give you some uh, open uh, source uh, corpus, right? But you know, to, 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 to have a big one like 60 million or uh, 100 million of sentence, sentence pairs, you have to do better than just uh, downloading the, the open source. Yeah. Usually you do crawling, crawling web pages that have uh, pages in the same language and try to um, align them and build up your own corpus. Interesting that you mentioned open subtitles as a data uh, yeah. data for for uh, learning it's model. Um, have you tried the other ones, uh, the other sites like for for the subtitles? Other uh, other data sources. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. We have our own Samsung. Uh, okay. Cor corpora, right. All right. Uh, I guess that uh, the last questions might be answered during the longer break, not this one. Uh, so thank you thank one you. more time.